Mr. The Woman, good evening to you and welcome once again to the platform of the Rest of the Woman. My name is Pastor Joy and it's my honor to welcome you to Rest of the Woman's platform. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that God has chosen to give, us, to give us life. He has given us life and we are glad and no matter what the circumstances and situations may be, you can know so well that the Lord takes care of his own. The Bible says he opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. Living thing includes both animals and plants and of course the human being that he made in his image. And we are grateful that God remembered us to give us life. And if the Lord remembered you to give you life, he has given you that life for a purpose. And in case you are in a state of confusion, you are in the state of not really understanding the purpose of the life you are, give, you are giving you, people say, ask of me. In the book of Jeremiah 33, he said, ask of me and I will show you. Call upon me, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are so many reasons why God has given us life and if we don't understand it, confusion and frustration will always follow what we do. So you look unto God and say, God, you gave me life. May I understand the purpose and may I maximize it. Praise the name of Jesus. We give God praise. Today is Sunday, the 10th of July. Glorious God, 2022, the year is going, and here we are, living in purpose, living and declaring, and living out the lifestyle that the Lord has given us. We've been handling a topic in this platform, we began just the last time, <laughs> and we looked at a topic, the woman and her fruitfulness. The woman and her fruitfulness, we began it, we just did the introduction. And today we are going to continue as we look at a woman's fruitfulness. We're going to elaborate what we said the last time regarding a particular woman. <laughs> this woman was a widow. Hmm. That means she has married a husband. And then the husband died and was buried. She was left alone. So she was a single mother and she had a son probably that woman would not be an old woman she would be a young woman because her child was still small so imagine her age we looked at the life of this woman the bible told us that the lord had commanded this woman to take care of the prophet elijah we saw clearly that that woman didn't hear a specific command from God telling her, you know, prophet Elijah, the national prophet that is well known, that I've just called for famine. Famine has started and everything is already drying up. I am sending that prophet to you. You're going to take care of him until the famine ended. No, she didn't hear such a word. She didn't. But she had this impression. As I look at that woman, I, 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 I began to perceive something. That woman must have had a gift. They must have had something. She must have had this thing about giving. She may have been called to the ministry of, of, of mercy, of compassion, of giving. Charitable works. Because the Lord has commanded her. It was because of the dryness and the scarcity of the situation that made her to really consider what she had left in her hands. But deep inside of her, she knew she had to do that. And when she yielded, something happened. We're going to get to that. That woman we looked at, we saw that God can use in the time of scarcity, in the time of dryness, God can use people that look insignificant, people that seem not to have anything in their hands. Do you know why? The Bible says so that no flesh 
will glory in his presence. Imagine if God has sent Elijah to a particular king that seems to have everything away from the land of Israel or some wealthy man somewhere. He could have attributed it to his wealth. And that is why I'm telling you today when we talk about the fruitfulness and we are looking at the woman. But if you're a man hearing us know that we're talking about fruitfulness towards God, the work of God and what God has it's us to do. And I believe that that was that woman's destiny. It was that woman's destiny. The loss of her husband didn't hinder her. Her empty handedness didn't hinder her. Her lack of savings didn't hinder her. The Bible said that what she had was the last meal. How can a last meal carry someone all the years of famine until rain came again? Until harvest began to come again. How can that happen? If only we can understand what fruitful means, fruitfulness means towards God. If only we can understand really what fruitfulness means towards God. And know what part God is expecting you to do. I want to read the scripture. I quoted all of this at the introduction of this woman and her fruitfulness. And I want to read it in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. I want to read just one verse, verse 19. The Bible says, that was Elijah talking to King Ahab. He said, and now therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. <laughs> That's a command to a king. Did you notice that? Now, therefore, send and gather to me. Hey, spiritual authority, talking to a king of the entire country, nation of Israel. He said, go gather unto me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. He now said, and the prophets of Baal, 450 counted complete. 450 and the prophets of the groups hey 400 which eat at Jezebel's table this is where we are picking it this is the end of the three and a half years of famine it just ended, but the rain has not come yet. And look at what we are seeing. Elijah began to make reference to something. Mm. Elijah made reference to a group of false prophets. I believe that the food that we are eating at Jezebel's temple was sumptuous. Imagine a king's delicacy. You ate it throughout the famine. Hmm. These false prophets were nourished while others were barely surviving. The Bible says the prophets of God, we are, they were killing them and some had to go into caves and hide. And while they were there, they were fed with bread and water. Fifty. 50 in a cave, a particular man took upon him to feed these hundred prophets of the living God in cave, hidden away. Thank God for that man. He was there serving with King Ahab, but he feared God. We saw this woman. You know, it, her rule looked very silent, yet throughout all eternity, what she did to sustain in this move of God, this work of God, she was so fruitful that we just cannot overlook what she did. And we are looking at this because in the midst of this generation, in the, in the midst of what we have found ourselves in this generation, God is still calling. I said that that woman didn't hear clearly where the Lord told him, I am Jehovah, I am sending prophet Elijah, he's going to be fed from your little meal that remained for all no 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 because we had the woman saying ah i just have a uh, the last meal that woman is a giver i can assure you because the man asked for water in the season where there was no water the woman was willing to part with the water to share the water and when the man asked for food he said man of god what i have is just the last meal 
We're not talking about meal or food or money. We're talking about services and fruitfulness. Because it is not just in bringing up finances. God may be calling somebody to the place of prayer. I have mentioned several women by the grace of God. As the Lord permits us, we've been looking at the life of several women. And their fruitfulness. And I believe God that as we look at the lives of this woman, you're going to look into your life and know your own area. Another woman I want to remind here is a woman called Anna. The Bible says that Anna, she was in the temple. She was serving. God with what? Fasting and prayers. Day and night, she never left the temple. She was also a widow woman. She lived with her husband for seven years from her virginity. We didn't have any record of her children. Maybe she didn't conceive or have any child. I'm talking about fruitfulness beyond your physical conception. And it pains me because some women just stop at the point of just bearing children. You don't just bear physical children and say, I'm a woman. The world have seen I'm a woman. Of course, no, beyond that. There are people God may have delayed their conception physically. That should not deny now you are being fruitful as a woman. I'm talking specifically to women because I tell you that the fruitlessness of the female gender is affecting us as a nation, is affecting us as a generation, is affecting us in the body of Christ. And until we begin to see fruitfulness beyond the fruitfulness of uh, giving birth physically. And we talked about the wife of uh, 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 Amram, that is Jacob, the wife of Amram, who is the mother mother of Moses. This woman didn't just end as producing three children. Moses was her last born. She gave birth to Moses at a time when they were killing children. You know, many women lost their children. My God. Oh my God. But this woman went beyond the physical fruitfulness and preserved her fruitfulness. She was able to strategize. You know what? If you don't place demand upon yourself and say, I am existing in this generation. God selected me for such a time as this. I must have something to do. I must have my own quota. I must have somewhere that I'm supposed to give something that will add to the benefit of where I belong as a child of God, as, a, as someone called to live in this generation. And until you discover it, my God, your place will be missing. Several women lost their children. But Jacobet said, I didn't go through this travail. I didn't go through this gestation period. I didn't just bring forth this joy and not reach him for three years. I don't know how she managed to do it, that the cry of the baby was not heard. Maybe she hit her pregnancy. Maybe she she she, she just had a an easy uh, um, um, whatever delivery and nobody even had i don't know how she was able to do it so well that nobody she was not for three months she hit the baby i don't know the baby was the baby not crying i don't know how she did it i believe that if you press through faith the bible say he was hit for three months that was faith and in this generation, God is calling out for our faith as women. This woman we are looking at, the widow of Zarephath, she stood by her faith. And God used that her little, weakened, you know, you know, insignificant. It almost looked as if it was insignificant. But it was a step of faith. And God used it to do something. Her obedience was able to finish false prophets of her generation the bible says that elijah took this false prophet after he has called down fire and called down right the bible says he took them and slaughtered them they are the valley it was the success and the fruitfulness of this widow who had no savings who had no husband who had no tomorrow but her faith. I am calling out because there is a woman who would tell me I don't have what to offer. If you are living, you know, some people, the Lord would tell them on that day, take away from him what he had. He said, those that have not shall be taken what they had. So the truth is that you really have something. Find out what you have. Find out what you have. I want to read that place a bit. The Bible says, the prophets of Baal, 450, against one man, and that is not yet enough. The prophets of the groves, that is another deity, 400 of them. 
and all of them are being nourished. The provision that is coming from Jezebel is sustaining. The Bible said they were eating at Jezebel's table. Meanwhile, who knows if this woman even have a table in her house? She was a poor little woman by the corner. But her little effort. Can I tell you that your little effort, God can lay hold on it. That is why the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Woman, is a call for you to rise up in faith. Is a call for you to step out like Peter and walk on that water. You may not know how you are going to do it, but you will hear God speaking. Like I said, the Lord told Elijah, I have commanded, and that is the ways of the Lord. The woman may say, am I sure? I don't know. Should I just be doing this? Will I just, just dedicate to be bringing that such amount every day or every month or every, or every year or whatever I'm going to? I, I don't know. It may come as a thought. The woman didn't really know, but she was persuaded. A prophet has spoken. I believe what the prophet said. If you listen in your heart, you will hear God speaking. If you are an intercessor, the Lord will be calling you to the place of prayer like you called Anna. If you are in the ministry of comfort, the ministry where you give help, the Lord will be calling you. Don't you ever say that what I'm giving is little. One hour of prayer, even 30 minutes of prayer, I mean not just, I mean groaning in the presence of the Lord. Just the words of comfort, just involving extra things that you do for the work of God, never goes on, on never, never goes unnoticed. And there will be a reward, Jesus told us. We are the ones God is using to bring down the works of the devil. Will you be left out? We're talking about your fruitfulness, woman. We are talking about as you are right now. I know you are planning how to do your own things, do your finish, the building you started, you know, complete this and complete that. Your children are about to leave school. The next phase of your life is coming. You are making your plans. In the midst of all that, where is God in all of your own calendar? What if God has been commanding you and you have not heard it? What if God, imagine if this woman has said, I, 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 man of God, hey, how can you tell me that God has commanded me? I've not heard anything from God do. From the woman's response, you will hear that God didn't speak to her directly, but there is a command. All she needs to do is to listen and hear. And she has to follow the prompting. What was the prompting? The man of God said, go, prepare a meal. Faith for me. Like I said the last time, it sounded like it was selfish. Man of God, didn't you consider that little boy? Didn't you consider the fact that this woman is, you know, you are a man. <laughs> he should consider the little children. And why will you now give, give to me first? It is not actually to the man of God. It is to the God he represented. Because someone needs to be sustained to face the power of darkness at that time. And you that is given, there is no way. There is no way you will go down. There is no way. You know, when you give, you lend unto the Lord. And God proved himself faithful. Both in this life, the Bible said, are going to receive a hundredfold. Didn't you see that? Didn't she really receive a hundredfold? I believe it was. <laughs> you can't count how many fold. The last meal sustained for years. Until the rain came. And when the rain came, I'm sure it didn't stop. Until harvest came and she had something to bring in. And then, oh my father, just like when the manna ended, the Bible said the children of Israel entered and ate of the old corn of the land, their promised land, and then the following day, the manna ceased. And that is how God will sustain you. Don't limit yourself because of what you think you don't have. Because if you have a heart, believe God by faith and go for say, God, what am I adding to your work. I want to be fruitful in my area. And I'm speaking specifically to women because I see that anytime God really moves, he moves women. He stirred their heart. In the ministry of Jesus, I thank God for Joseph Aramantia. He showed up at the birth 
death of Jesus and provided the tomb that Jesus was buried on. I saw, um, what's his name again? Um, Nicodemus the night. He also bought spices and added to the ones that they used to embalm Jesus, you know, to wrap him that day for burial and everything. But for the sustaining of the running of the ministry of Jesus, I discovered it was women. They were fruitful. Are you fruitful woman? I don't know where you are. I don't know what you do. I'm not just talking about what. I'm talking about being fruitful towards the work of God. Jesus said that these people are storing up for themselves treasures and they are not rich towards God. Are you rich towards God? In that local assembly where you belong, where you know the work of God is really going on, what is your own quota? I don't mean what you would do to be seen. This woman's name was not known till today. We call her the widow of Zarephath. We don't know the woman. We don't know her. Her name, we don't know. It's not what you do that must be heard and must be seen. That people say, oh, she's the one that brings the higher support for the welfare department in our church. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being fruitful. There is a need somewhere. And God, if you can listen, he's speaking to you. He's actually commanding you. And if you can say, Lord, I want to be fruitful before you. I want to be rich towards you. That woman was rich towards God. It's not about the volume or the amount. It's about it. Is about your opening up. We are still trying to do this introduction because we are going to look deeper. This is the same woman we talked about in the introduction. We want to lay this emphasis that as we continue, you see yourself and look and locate where you really belong in being fruitful as a woman. I said the last time we will pray for women who may be trusting God for physical fruitfulness. Oh my God. God can break the barrier of barrenness barrenness and physically we're gonna pray for women who are trusting god for the fruit of them i tell you it's a joyful thing to be a mother i remember the first time i gave birth that was my first baby boy mighty man i gave birth to him i carried that baby i remember two days after the delivery i have to leave the hospital and go home i came back i said i mean this is my baby nobody's going to carry this baby and that was 15 years ago i said wow as in this is my baby as in how oh, is my own nobody will come and carry. you know there is this joy when you i said it's in the taking care of the baby is your own he cries you'll be there to take care of the baby and all that you know there is something about having your own child and it's the joy of every woman to have everyone who is expecting the fruit of the womb somebody hearing me you have had a child and that is a boy and years have gone you are trusting god for another conception it has not come i hear the lord say woman i am remembering you in this season you're going to conceive you are going to carry the baby and you're going to bring forth there is a medical condition around you are not being able to conceive all these years but i hear the lord say he is breaking it thank you father Oh, glorious Jesus. Someone else advancement have come upon you. Years have come upon you. And now it is getting risky because you have not been able to conceive for all these years. And at this point, it looks risky. But I want to let you know the power of God is coming upon you. And then that which is impossible is being made. As I'm talking, the virtue of God is flowing. The power of God is flowing. The impossible is becoming possible. That God who caused Elizabeth to conceive when she was well stricken in age the same god that quickens the virtue and the power is flowing right now you will not be barren he said none shall be called barren you cannot go barren you cannot continue to be barren there is a release of fruit I, I i really want to hear this testimony because i can see them happening wherever you are anywhere you are hearing us the lord is assuring you if you are really desiring to conceive conception is released one god mentioned about a woman this woman you have had your first baby it was a baby boy and for years after you've not been able to conceive and there is a medical condition around it the lord said that that medical condition is ending right now and you are conceiving in this season he said in this season that means around the circle of life your next ovulation you are taking in and nothing can stop the bringing forth of the next baby as you desire thank you jesus Another person 
dollars and the Lord said you have advanced in years and right now you look as if it's impossible. God said the God of all impossibility is stepping into that case. I'm so excited about this. And for any other person beyond these two conditions the Lord just mentioned now, he is giving you your miracle. You will shall be fruitful. You shall be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for that miracle in Jesus' name. I want to read the next scripture and then I will be concluding. Hallelujah. I want to read the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. I'll be concluding with this scripture, 1 Kings 17 verse 14. That was a prophecy regarding the woman that stepped by, out by faith. And some woman, God may be calling you in your local assembly, in your environment, or whatever area the Lord will be calling you to be fruitful. Look at the, con the word of God and the command of God. He said, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. It is a world that sustains. As you step out by faith, as you take God by his word, as you say, Lord, I want to step out. There is this joy in giving, I tell you. Mm. There is this joy in being a blessing. Oh my God. You cannot describe it until you are involved in it. If you've ever been a blessing to someone, if you've ever been the reason why someone is saying, Lord, thank you for this woman, or thank you for this man, or thank you for this family. There is this joy. The Bible says, "Blessed, more blessed it is to give than to receive. As you step out by faith and look around you and say, Lord, I want to begin to be a blessing. God said that thing where you think is ending, that thing that you have been trying to hold back will not fail. Even if there is barrenness, even if there is famine, trust the Lord and he's going to do it. Trust the Lord and he's going to do it. He said the barrel of meal. The barrel maybe is what she used to pour the meal. I don't know what it looks like. Maybe a container where she pours it when it was plenty and now it was remaining for the loss. It, it will not be wasted. It shall not waste. I mean, it should not just finish. It will be there. Whatever be your store, whatever be your business, whatever be the source of your income, whatever it would be, it, it, whatever it was that you, you are being sustained, even in the midst of scarcity, in the midst of this economic, you know, all the things are, are, are so, you can see what is happening, yet there is a supernatural force that sustains. The Bible says it will not fail. Even the cruise of oil, God gave a command and those things had to replace themselves. It's a miracle that science cannot explain. <laughs> it's a miracle that human calculations cannot articulate. They can't put it together. And that is what is coming your way as you take that step of faith and say, I want to be fruitful as a woman. Next time we come, we're going to look at the lives of other women. We mentioned some women. I mentioned Deborah. Mm -hmm. She was fruitful in her generation. I mentioned Anna. Ha. She was fruitful in her generation. She had no child. Her husband have also died. Yes, she made a mark. Fruitfulness as a woman. Ah, uh, we also mentioned the Lisbeth. We're gonna look at this woman's life as the Lord permits us. I mentioned also um Tabitha. Yes, Docas. I tell you something. All of these people, they were fruitful. As we look into their lives, we are trusting the Lord for us to look into our own life so that we will not pass through the sand of time pass through this earth and end up not really having anything to show your purpose if you leave this earth without making internal impact and investment the lord said some people are rich on earth but they are not rich towards god being fruitful is taking what god has blessed you with and multiplying it in the lives of people you cannot give out and be reduced you can't give out and be reduced. I pray God to open your eyes for you to see areas you will be a blessing in your neighborhood. Can we pray together tonight? Say, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. If you're a man, can thank God for your life. But for a woman, say, thank you for making me a woman. 
Thank you for making me fruitful. And if you're the one believing God for the fruit of the one, thank God for fruitfulness in your body and trust him to make you fruitful in every other area. Somebody, you need the Lord to calm your mind because you are getting agitated because of the areas of fruitlessness in your life. Ask uh, the Lord, oh, thank you, Father. Just say, Lord, calm my mind. All of this irritation. Uh, somebody, you are getting irritated at any little thing. Right now, as you're hearing me, the Lord is taking it away. Be a person of peace and trust God to handle things in your life. Thank you, Father. Father, the joy that passes all understanding, the peace that passes all understanding, let it keep the heart and the mind of your people. And I want to give you praise for what you have done. And in the name of Jesus, Father, I lift up my voice in authority. I come against every spirit of fruitlessness. I come against every barrenness. Spirit of barrenness, I bind you. I come against everything the enemy has arrange against these women that are supposed to be fruitful. Father, let the root of all these things be uprooted in the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit of fruitfulness that is the spirit of the living God to be released upon your people. Let this season be fruitful in the midst of scarcity, in the midst of uncertainties in our generation. Father, release fruitfulness in every area in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and thank God even though we are living at times of uncertainty, times of darkness, times of lack, times of scarcity, I want you to rejoice. I want you to know that in the midst of all these days, the Lord can make you fruitful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Till I come your word again, I'm Pastor Joy, and this is The Rest of the Woman. God bless you. Full of honor. Full of glory. Hey, hey, I like that one. I'm the last one of God's creation. <laughs> I have affections coming out. And discretion.